children. Praise the Lord. Please be seated. Please be seated. Mark, did you? Mark, you went that way. Yes, no, it's not that way. All right, let's bow our heads. Father, we praise you today and thank you, Father, for thank you so much for the fact that you are holy. And we thank you for sending Jesus. Because in our own efforts, there is just no way. But now, because Jesus died, came sin for us, perfect Lamb of God. And he rose again the third day. Our God is alive. No other God. There's no other God. Our God is alive. Jesus rose again. And because of this, we can have the righteousness of Christ. We can, we can be seen in your eyes, Father, as holy because of your Son. We're great. Thank Jesus. Listen, he, he's the reason you're going to heaven if you're saved. He's the reason for your existence. He's, he's everything. Jesus is everything. He's the I am. He's the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning, the ending. He's on as as we learn every page of the Bible. He is the Bible. He's the Logos. He's the Word that became flesh and dwelt among us. We need you so much, Jesus, and thank you for sending your very spirit, the Holy Spirit. To abide within us, to help us, to guide us, to co convict us, to, to love us back. You are holy and worthy of our praise. We pray today for the sick, lift them up. Say the names if you'd like. We lift up today the prodigal sons and daughters. We can't move it, Lord. We can't change it. We have to trust you. We pray for the lost. Our hearts do break, Jesus, for a world is trying to do it without you. Trying to be their own gods. Trying to find satisfaction in, satisfaction in things that just will not satisfy. So let's break our hearts, Lord, for the lost. Those that are on the run for you. Please help, Lord. Give us peace that you've got it. That you're never going to leave us nor forsake us. That the things that we can't see, we can trust you with. Yes. Walk by faith, thank God by sight. Yeah. It's in Jesus' name we pray this morning. And all God's children say, Amen. Please stand.
servant now. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, with your eyes gazing or cast them this way, if you would, and, uh, and a three, two, one. I pity the fool. <laughs> Raise your hand if you know who that guy is. It's a good looking guy, right? I'd do that if I could get away with it, but it's you know. <laughs> I got something to grow there. Who is it? Mr. T. Mr. T. I don't know if it's true, but I heard, I think I've heard, heard that he actually a Christian. Yeah. I think I've heard that before. That's a that's a good thing that he's a brother in Christ. You want that guy on your side. <laughs> Amen. If you took out rock, I mean, let's be real. You want that guy on your side. Pity the fool. Remember him saying that? So, but poor Mr. T, 
we find today, as we move in our introduction into chapter 3 of Galatians, that Paul had some words to say long before Mr. T, some words to say about foolishness. Some foolishness. And so we're going to look at that. We're going to break into this chapter, as always, slowly and get as much out of this as we can. Have you ever been called a fool? Raise your hand. It's one thing to label somebody as a fool, and it's another thing, in my understanding, to do something foolish. Have you raised your hand, both hands, if you've ever done something foolish? Admit to it. Okay. I'm glad that I'm filled with a room full of uh, people that have done foolish things, because I have, we've all been there, done that. But we would never want to say that person's just a fool, but we've done foolish things. And, uh, and we readily, quickly admit to that. What if an apostle penned a letter to Emsley First Baptist Church, and I opened the letter, and it just said, fools. That would sting, amen? Coming from the apostle Paul. I mean, just a first, just, well, this is the third chapter of the letter. This is well into the letter. But what if somewhere in that letter, all of a sudden, no longer is he dealing so much with, with the, his fellow Jews going backwards and trying to work their way to heaven. Now he's calling, what if he's calling Ensley First Baptist Church fools? That would sting, especially as a pastor. I can tell you right now, that would sting out her bad. I'd want to know how I was being foolish one or two things happens when you're called out. What are they? We either get prideful and bow out our chest like, who do you think you are? Or we could do what God would want us to do is self-evaluate. Maybe there's some truth to that. Humble ourselves, right? Either get prideful or humble ourselves. Well, they were getting called out by Paul because they were going in the wrong direction. And he's doing this in writing and he's calling out the foolishness. And just so we can move on, Mr. T was not involved at all. <laughs> that, I'm, that I'm aware of. Okay. Thought I'd have you can he looks good there, but you can take him down. Thank you. The word. Out of reverence to God and word, please. Standing. Can they stand? Yes, yeah, stand. Stand up, sit down, fight, fight, fight. Alright, we're gonna verse one only today. And there's a lot to unpack here. So we're moving in. Here we go. Galatians chapter 3 and verse 1. And there it is. Oh, foolish Galatians. That's a stinger, right? That's a spiritual right cross right to the mouth. What are we doing wrong? Oh, foolish Ensleyites. Say with me. Oh, foolish battleship crew. That would sting. Oh, foolish Galatians. Who had bewitched you that ye should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth crucified among you. Praise God for his word. Please be seated. Paul's words are strong. Obviously they're strong. Y'all are being foolish. The southern, little southern translation there. Y'all are being foolish. What does the word mean in the language? Well, it's, it's unwise. It's unwise. Y'all are being unwise. Speaking to the Galatians. I don't know that we're struggling with this. Maybe we'll look at it today. Now, I'd be bummed, as I said, sad emoji face for sure, if that came to us. If we were being called out as foolish at Ensley First Baptist Church, that would, or unwise, that would sting. Paul isn't saying they're stupid here. Let's be clear. He's not saying y'all are a bunch of stupid idiots over there. It's not what he's saying. Um, they, they have the knowledge, but they don't use it, David Guzik shares with us. When I first went, I was called by the Lord to, to, to be a pastor. I remember walking down the aisle of a much smaller church than this, of, of a Choctaw Beach First Baptist Church in, in Choctaw Beach, Florida, close to Nice. Well, I walked down the aisle, preacher had preached, 
And I felt called. I'd been saved, but I felt called to be a pastor. So I walked down that aisle, and it's a very long story after that because I didn't surrender right away. I was intimidated, and I was learning that to, to do this consistently, it's important to learn, and in most cases, it's important to go to school. So to go to college for me was like, Really, Lord, are you sure this is the plan? So I ran for a while. Didn't want to go to college. And the first time I went to Taylor University at that building, and I'm looking around like, I don't belong here. I, so it's like God was like shoving me through the door. Not only so much so that I not feel like I belong there, but I did one semester, then quit. And came back to the South, if I remember right. And then God would not let it rest. Then I loaded up U-Hauls, two dogs, and family, and headed back up into the snow. And uh, this was years later, in round two, same school. And so I was very intimidated. Wasn't a good student in high school. Never got, I don't think I ever got an A. Raise your hand if you ever got an A before. In high school, I don't think I ever got an A. I, I was doing just good enough to get out of there. That was that was the goal, to get that piece of paper. And, and really, I don't think it was a goal at the time. I just wanted to have fun, party. I'm not very smart, so let me just go in the military. And um, I was told by the recruiters, by the way, recruiters, you better pray before you go see a recruiter. I was told by the recruiter that uh, that there'll be a girl waiting, girls, multiple girls, ladies will be waiting for you in every port. And in many ways, they weren't kidding. That was one truth he told me. That is that is the truth. But but it was in the military, God got a hold of me and saved my soul. Praise so God. So God had to get me away from everything. Well, long story short, here I am back at Teal University, back in school, going to college. Never had a day in my life. And, and, and so what I would do, because I was struggling to learn to get good grades, I thought it was high technology at the time. But you ever see these little bitty tape recorders with a little bitty cassette that you put in there? This was before you could do everything with your phone. I mean, everything now you could do with your phone. Where's my phone? I won't survive another second without my phone. Where is it? It's not charged. Right? <laughs> I mean, we're really, I can't speak Greek, but I'm being pitiful. Oh, help me, Lord. But those little, I had this little tape recorder. So the professors, the teachers, said, take copious notes. Well, for starters, I didn't even know what copious meant. <laughs> so I did. You know, I, I guess that's abundant. So I'm looking at all these 18, I, you know, I'm done with the military. I've been, I've experienced life in all the world at this point. But I'm looking at all these 18, 19, and 20 year olds and, and the, the professor's like, hey, copious notes and he's talking 100 miles an hour and they got a pen and they're using it. So I'm looking around like, Jesus, are you sure that I'm supposed to be here? I love, I mean, I love the Bible classes. I really did. But I knew I was going to struggle, so I record everything, and I drove. This is God. I drove for five years. I know it's not the five-year plan. Five years, 81 miles, one way, up into the snow, one way, sometimes three to four times a week, to go from my house, where my parents and grandma was, to, to Taylor University in, in Indiana. So I would record the notes and I would listen to the class over and over again, right? Which was helpful. Then I'd take the recording and I'd get three by five cards to do flip before cell phones. You know what three by five cards are? <laughs> and I'd write down the things that the professor was saying that you need to take note of this. And I'd write it down and I'd make flashcards. So I'd be going flying down, was it 65? 69. I'm flying and I'm heading back and forth. And, it, and I, this is not advised. Please don't do this. But I'd be like, you know, 
looked in the three by five card, studied it. One time I was pastor of a church at the time, South Litchfield Baptist Church, some of the church members. Imagine this. You pull alongside your pastor and he never sees you. And I pull into a gas station and they pulled in behind me like, we're going to pray for you because you're going to die kind of thing. But I would study. I would take those notes. And I wanted so much to do well because I was lousy in high school. I, I was labeled early on, which was true, learning disabled. In fact, we're going to deal with a, a word tonight that's, that's bewitched. And I'm having a heck of a time not saying betwitched. So I have trouble with my eyes. I see things that get messed up on me. And, I, and so I was labeled as a child. They used to do eye exercises with me. So college was overwhelming to me. But God called me there so I could do this. Praise God. And so I, so many times I'd struggle. I'd go in and I'd read to the, the lead counselor I had, one of the professors, my Bible uh, professor. And I'd say, Dr. Beaverstein, I can't, like a little kid, I can't do this. And he'd hug me and he'd like, like he just left the military, he'd man up, and he'd shove me back out the door. And I'd go back to class kind of. It was kind of the atmosphere. She kept trying to give up, but God would not let it happen. But I was taking notes. And I wanted to learn the word. I wanted to gain the truth of God's word. And God helped me in one of my very first classes, an Old Testament survey class, for the first time ever. Got a 100 for the whole class. Yeah. Praise, that's all praise to God. And so I was so excited. You know, when Maddie comes home and Maddie cranks off A's like there's nothing to it. And I'm like, you know, whatever. You got it from your mind. You know, there's so much stuff on the fridge. Like, it's like, wow, it's just coming at you. A's, A's, God, I got a B plus. I will with you, please. So, but with me, clear the fridge, Grandma. I put that final test. I'm, the, I'm 30 plus ago. Put it on the fridge. Touchdown, Jesus. Touchdown, Jesus. So, all of that to say, college now obviously is over for now. Although I'm, maybe I'm contemplating one day. That's another story. I don't want to forget the truths that I've learned. The Holy Spirit is still teaching and reminding. I love Sunday school here. Gary gets deep into it. I'm gathering from the Holy Spirit from his class and other classes. The Holy Spirit is still teaching. We, we want to be careful that we don't forget. This is where this is going. I don't want to forget the things that I learned at Taylor University. I don't want to forget the things I've learned today in Bible study this morning. And if you're not in a Bible study, you got, you got to get in where God wants to feed you. Amen. He's trying to feed you, and if you don't, you'll forget the truths of God's word. Then you're in trouble. Are you listening to me? So I don't want to forget. I want to keep learning. The Holy Spirit. Are you ever too old no. where you can say, okay, I've learned it. I'm good. No? I'm going to be 54 next year. 54 is good. Am I good? Anybody over 54? Y'all got it figured out? Y'all got it? You got it? You nails got it? The Holy Spirit is still teaching, and we've got to keep learning. We want to be careful. We don't forget. Be aware, as if we're not constantly in the Word and seeking God's truth, we've got to be aware because, because false teaching could come our way, and we might buy it. it is, well, that might be true. If we're not in God's Word, if we're not surrendered and submitting ourselves to solid teachers, that are seeking God, that are preparing, that are teaching the truths of God, well, you're, you're in a dangerous place to buy lies. Like, for example, a work salvation lie in context. First Timothy 4, you can mark that down, or Matthew 7, 15 through 20, deals with false teachers, but we're not going to go there too much today it's in the sense of turning to those pages, but please check that. Now, Paul... I almost said here that he's the original professor or teacher of grace, look at me, of grace 101. But really, the original is Jesus. So we'll call Paul the second uh, professor 
of grace 101. Now, was Paul sent to the Jews or to the Gentiles? Gentiles. Say it loud. Gentiles. To the Gentiles, right? He started out with the Jews, and then they wanted to kill him. <laughs> but, but God sent Paul to the Gentiles, okay? And to teach grace 101, we'll call it. For the Galatians, a grace class, it was becoming a foggy memory. You ever feel like that you, your mind gets in a fog and you start to forget? That's what's so beautiful, beautiful about the Word of God. It's never going away. And you get, we have so many, you have so many, so much access to the Word of God in this country. There's no excuse really for not being in it day Amen. after day after day. And somebody in here is not. Maybe more than one in here is not in it day after day after day. And you're and it's hurting you. It's, it's, it's hurting you. You've got to be in the Word every day. And, and some, some in here could attend, I'm just going to get on toes, could attend Bible studies more often than you may do. You can hurt yourself. But, but it shouldn't be a grind. So I'd rather you not, help me Holy Spirit, I would rather you not attend if you don't want to be there, but then I would rather you pray that you would have a hunger for God's word. Does that make sense? So that you want to be there. If you're going to study the Bible out of obligation, it's probably going to still be good because a lot of times I'll go to something I didn't feel like going to, but, and then I'm glad once I got there. You ever have that happen? Like the flesh is holding you back and you don't feel like doing it, but then when you do something for God or, or experience a God teaching you, like, oh, I'm glad that I listened to God. Amen. But it's even better, it would be even better if there was this just driven hunger to soak up God's word with every thought and every breath. Amen? Amen. So let's pray for that because we need it. So the, the Galatians, they were, the word here is bewitched, not betwitched. <laughs> they were bewitched. We, this isn't talking about that show from the 70s. Was it the 70s? The, the comedy? No. And that's the one where she twinkled her nose or whatever. Yeah, no. Get that out of your head. Out of your head. Be that's not what I'm talking about. They were bewitched by false teachers and professors teaching, watch it now, not Grace 101, but Law 101. Now, we know clearly from the Word of God that only one individual ever was able to put the 100% on God's refrigerator in his name it was his son and his name is Jesus Jesus, Jesus is the only one that ever got that, that, that ever got every answer right that kept all the rules that kept the law okay and that same one that was able to put his perfect score on the refrigerator. Does the, I don't think the father has a, re, a refrigerator, but are you with me? <laughs> the only one that was able ever to do that is Jesus, and he looks at the rest of us and says, look, I love you. You're never going to do it. That's right. you, you can't get a 100 for this class. So let me, let me do it for you. Well, if you miss one question, you fail. This one question ever, you fail. Are you with me this morning on this strange illustration? A law degree, it may fill your pockets with money and put your picture up on a billboard, and you may do really pitiful commercials on TV, but a law degree won't save you. It will not save you. If you think you know every aspect of the Pentateuch, of Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, if you become an expert at the law, you're still lost without Jesus because you can't keep it. Amen. Professors, teachers, gave the Galatians a false presentation, representation of the true gospel. Truth, the true gospel, very simply put, Faith alone in Jesus saves. That's as simple as I can say it. Bill. Uh, they could have been led away by the fake news. 
<laughs> Another sermon, though. We're moving. A false gospel is, watch this now. Let me start over. A, the true gospel, keeping it simple, faith alone in Jesus saves. Say amen if you agree. Amen. A false gospel, faith, faith plus something. And that's what the Judaizers were bringing to town. That's what a lot of the, the confusion was about in this chapter. Paul's clarifying, making it abundantly clear. They should have been able to see this, and they had seen it. But they were going backwards. It's the old, uh, God's got me going this way. And then you go five, seven steps forward, and then you go, well, how many? Backwards. But come back a little bit and, and take up some laws to take with you so you feel a little more holy while you're moving down the narrow road. The Holy Spirit will help you with all that. The Holy Spirit will correct you. But, you, but going backwards, um, look like you're going forward, but you're moonwalking. I won't attempt, but you get what I'm saying, right? They were bewitched, and they bought it. A false gospel, they bought it. David used it right. Bewitched has the idea that the Galatians were under some type of spell. Paul didn't mean this literally, but their thinking was so clouded and so unbiblical that it seemed that some kind of spell had been cast over them. Are Christians today susceptible to buy a faith plus work salvation? Amen. Are churches, church bodies, I don't know. I'm just throwing this out there. Do you think it's possible that there are churches that are being bewitched today? Amen. And you really think about it. Satan, he really just continues to go back to all of his same tricks that he's tried to use in the past. It just, you know, he just keeps trying the same things over and over again. And sadly, the reason he does that is because many buy it. Many times it works. So, maybe churches are being bewitched by preachers teaching a works salvation. It's just really that simple. I want to take a moment to confess that publicly, because I've been preaching a long time. And, and Lord Jesus, if ever, and I'm sure I have, if ever I either, either given the, the impression or even said the words that somehow people's works weren't good enough, for them to think that's what's going to save them. Did I say all that right? Lord, help me and please forgive me. I don't ever want to, if I've done that, I don't ever want to do it again. Amen? Amen. Now, am I saying we shouldn't live holy lives? God forbid. The Holy Spirit will help you live a holy life. Amen? Amen. I'm amazed when Gentiles, American Gentiles, let's talk America for a minute because. We've been talking about Peter's conflict with Paul, Paul's conflict with Peter. Paul was dealing with the people that came from the Jerusalem church, and there was conflict, and he was dealing with his Jewish brothers. But now he's looking back to the Galatians, a bunch of Gentiles. Well, let's fast forward and put ourselves kind of in that situation. In, in America today, um, there might be, that's what I'll ask, but I doubt it, but I could be wrong. Is there anybody in here that's a 100% DNA Jew? Not a soul. Anybody that think you might have some Jewish background DNA in your, anybody? Okay, so we're in a room full of born again Christians that are American Gentiles, right? So let's gather that idea. So I'm amazed when Gentiles, American Gentiles, not a Jewish bone in their body, not any DNA at all, Americans saved by faith alone, Ephesians 2, 8, 9, for by grace are you saved by faith, your faith, and then out of yourselves, it's the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. You hear Romans 10, 13, every time you come here almost, Romans 10, 13, that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord, they shall be saved. So you didn't grow up a Jew, you didn't, you didn't grow up learning the Torah, you didn't grow up learning the details, you didn't go to synagogue, you, you grew up in, 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 
probably a Baptist, Methodist, Presbyterian, Pentecostal church, heard the gospel, called out Romans 10, 13, got saved. Contact. American Gentiles, not Jewish, suddenly feel they need to put themselves back under the law that didn't save them in the first place. Are you with me? Amen. That puzzles me. Puzzles me big time. Um, and I've probably done it myself. Try to add to the works of the cross. Thank the cross Jesus was on, but there's the picture. Try to add to that. Thanks for what you did, Jesus, here. And, and we bow and we, 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 we ask Jesus, Romans 10, 13, to save us. And the blood was shed and we celebrate his death, burial, resurrection every year and hopefully throughout the year. And then we get up and we go away from the cross and somehow we get in our head that maybe that wasn't enough. Just wasn't good enough. Well, that's nonsense. Amen. Right? Amen. Try to add to the work of the cross, which, which we can't do. And those that go back and try to take up the law, you can't do it. Romans 3.23 still stands. We're all sinners and we've all fallen short of the glory of God. Amen. Remember, Paul died to the law. We saw that in Galatians 2.19. He died for the law. He was telling his own, his own heritage, his own, his own people, he was telling the Jews to die to the law. We died to the law. But then he said, but we live unto God. Some American Christians become, and here's the language, fascinated is the word, bewitched by a, by a legalist preacher or teacher Picking and choosing which laws he, the legalist preacher, concludes or concluded you must keep to be justified by God, to be holy enough, to be holier than thou, to be holier than those people over there. It's a self righteous superiority. A formula, watch what happens when we try to live on that. When we're trying to keep certain laws, but by the way, as Gary mentioned, if you break one of them, James, two, you've, you've broken them all. But, but let's say you're going to try to keep up with whatever this particular legalist preacher is telling you, and it's, it's a self-righteous superiority and a formula for his followers to experience religious depression. Are you following what I'm saying? Amen. You get discouraged every time you blow it. That's right. You get, you get super sad every time you think, well, maybe I lost my salvation today. That's right. Because you're just never quite good enough. <clears throat> and under that type of leadership, you come in and you hear how you've blown it again, you've blown it again, you've blown it again, and you leave with your tail between your legs like, I just can't please God. Amen. And folks, the reality is none of us could please God. But Jesus did the pleasing for us so we could Amen. be set free. Praise God. And yet we're still going to sin, but we don't want to sin, but we, we, we hear the Holy Spirit, Jeff, don't do that. He tries to catch his head. Sometimes I still blow it. And then, then I repent and he restores me and loves me and gets me going again. Amen? Amen. Jesus dealt with legalists. Now, they weren't Gentiles. <laughs> they weren't Gentiles. They were the scribes and the Pharisees. You can mark these verses down. Pray for me because it's, these numbers might mix me up here. But Matthew 23 Chapter 23, verse 23 through 33. And he called them many times hypocrites. What's a hypocrite? It's an actor. It's somebody playing a part, but it's not really the truth, is it? Amen. Called hypocrites. And then in verse 23 of that chapter, he, Jesus, not holding back, said to the legalist, 
ye serpents. That doesn't sound very nice at all. That ye serpents, ye generation of vipers, how can ye escape the damnation of hell? They were trying to please God through their works. It's really no different for Gentiles. So my point is, why those of us and to the Galatians and to, to Ensley, why we learned that we're saved by grace, we couldn't earn it, we didn't deserve it, we called that to Jesus, he saved us, we praise him. Why then would Gentiles of all people, Gentile Christians, want to go back and take up the law again? It's insanity. It's craziness. It can't be done. And I think it's because the enemy uses people of influence to pressure that you're just not good enough yet. You're not as good as I am yet. And you need to step up your game for God. Amen. How about this? How about, how about we just walk with the Holy Spirit and ask him each day, Lord, help me because I can't do this without you. Your righteousness, I thank you for the righteousness of Christ. That you may be righteous. And, and you'll grow in your faith that way. That's right. But, but don't take back up a, a place of legalism. It's not biblical. It will, it will hurt your walk. You'll be the most depressed. You ever see a Christian who walks around like they just had their head kicked in? They're always discouraged. They're always depressed because they're just... They're under this pressure that they're just not hitting the mark. They say, None of us are going to hit the mark. <coughs> Jesus helps us hit the mark. And if, if there's any sense to this in your heart, today, say amen. amen. American Gentile Christian, bewitched with a legalist preacher. Keep the rules and you'll be saved. That is, listen to me, a lie. Isaiah 40, I'm sorry, Isaiah 64, 6 says, or it, it, it teaches us that, that my righteousness is about as good as the filthy rags. Now James 2.10, we covered that multiple times throughout this. And if you're seeing this on the, on the video for the first time, you need to go check out chapter 1 and 2. We've covered all this. James 2.10, if you if you fail in one area of the law, you've broken all of them. Only one kept the rules, and his name was Jesus. Uh, so they became, the Galatians became bewitched. They, com they complied with legalist set rules for righteousness. And Paul calls this foolishness. Is that time? Not really, but let me do it. Words here. <clears throat> what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Let that sink in for just a second. We sing it, it's true, it's biblical, the blood was shed, he did you know sin became sin for us. His his blood, sacrificial blood, the atoning blood. If you teach otherwise, if you teach that it's the blood plus something else, that is a lie and that is an error and that is that is that is sin. You're saying his blood wasn't good enough. But I'm telling you as your pastor, the blood was more than sufficient for your sins and for mine. Amen. Amen. Paul taught and reminded the Galatians as he reminded Peter and others that they knew better. Galatians 2.16 toward the end of that verse says, for by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. He came into this world condemned already, John 318 and by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified therefore Jesus didn't come to condemn the world he came to save the world for God so loved for God to love the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have what 
everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He came to do what we cannot do. It's foolish to put oneself back under the law. If you are a legalist or you are dabbling in legalism, you are getting out of the bounds of the scripture and you better get back in line with God's word and that grace alone, the faith in Jesus Christ, period, is what saved your soul. And not only at that moment, but really we need to live in grace day after day after day, the unmerited favor of God, knowing that you don't need to continue beating yourself up. You don't need to hang on to that sin anymore. You don't need to keep stressed out and carrying loads. Walk in the grace of God because he died for all that mess. Trash it. Move forward on the narrow road with Jesus. Somebody say amen. amen. Paul had taught them very clearly about the death of Jesus Christ. Before whose eyes Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed among you as crucified. Like a tweet. Back to the phone. Of DJT, like a tweet from Donald J. Trump that goes viral. Paul had reached the Galatians over and over. It had gone viral, the message of the cross. If they had billboards, it would have been on billboards. Paul had preached it, in other words, so they should have clearly seen it and understood it, and they did. But they were suddenly in this fog, buying the lies of Satan. Now they had to take the law back up again. With the redemptive message of Jesus dying for them on his old rugged cross. They were forgetting this, but Paul had taught them. They had become short-sighted, looking through Satan's fog that he was putting in front of them. Again, you have got to stay in the word. You have got to stay in solid teaching. And if you're not getting the teaching you feel like the Holy Spirit's giving you here, find somewhere where you get it. I pray it's here. If this is your church home, this should be where you get it. Amen. Amen. You once saw clearly Paul telling, telling them how soon we forget. And the word of the day is foolish. Foolish to take up the law again. I get frustrated confessing sin again. Far more than I get frustrated with one of our friends out here in the afternoon that I may have to deal with who's, who's going sideways, I get far more frustrated and judgmental of leaders or Christians that should know better. And I gotta work on that. I gotta love them just like I would somebody that knows they're broken. And I gotta work on myself, because sometimes I get legalistic run, which I know I shouldn't do. We've got to watch it. So let's not pity the foolishness. Let's not pity the fool. Let's not do that. Let's pray that the legalists will embrace grace. Please stand.